Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone. Oh yes, welcome back to no longer the past decade at Fort Park, but now the past year at Fort Park, where today we are taking a look back at the roller coaster year that was 2020. Let's go. So it may seem like an absolute eternity ago, but 2020 started off with some subtle teasing on some of the park's social media posts. These teases consisted of glitch effects being added to photos, along with the caption, system initializing, and the hashtag, Forp Park. This teasing seemed to continue on from a tease at the end of 2019's end of year video. Similar glitched photo posts continued right up until the 25th of February, when at 9.55am, Fort Park tweeted that the countdown is on for 10am, which was literally 5 minutes later. What a great way to build up anticipation. At 10am though, it was then officially announced that new for 2020 at the Fort Park Resort would be the world's first Black Mirror experience, called Black Mirror Labyrinth. This announcement was very exciting and fans quickly started bombarding the park's social media team trying to discover all of the smaller details about this new attraction. From these questions, it was confirmed that it would be located where the Walking Dead Living Nightmare had previously been and that it would not be an upcharge attraction. Later on that very same day, Fort Park then went ahead and announced all of the events that will be coming to the park this year, including the brand new Hyper Spring and Supercharged Summer events. Hyper Spring was set to include the Cosmic Six Challenge, which seemed to be another QR scanning challenge, which allowed you to unlock a cryptic code phrase. It also promised to introduce a brand new for 2020 live show and limited edition digital delicacies available at select outlets across the island. Then, during May half term only, there were set to be random roller coaster replays, detonation delays, and system overloads as the park battled a trans dimensional glitch with Hyper Ride Roulette. Talking to some staff members, it seemed like this included things such as random drop sequences on Detonator and occasional rewrites on some of the park's major coasters. Then, what was due to be later on in the year, Supercharged Summer was set to introduce the hashtag Super Soaked Selfie Challenge. Oh yes. Overall, it certainly seemed like an action-packed year from the Fort Park Resort. Moving on from February 25th's announcements, things were still looking great on March the 6th when the park released their fresh new 2020 map. Then, things quickly took a turn for the worse, and I'm sure you are all aware it was around this time when the coronavirus was taking over the world. This led to, on March the 19th, four days before the park's scheduled annual pass opening day, the resort putting out a statement confirming they would not be going ahead with their scheduled opening. This was of course a shame, but was definitely the correct decision for the park to make. As the corona situation worsened, the Fort Park Resort of course remained closed. However, their social media posts continued with fun word searches and challenges to keep people entertained. In June, Fort Park then released their new online merch store, along with some brand new merch pieces. Then, the day we'd all been waiting for. On June 23rd, it was finally announced that Fort Park and every other UK theme park could reopen on July the 4th. Most leisure facilities and tourist attractions will reopen if they can do so safely, including outdoor gyms and playgrounds, cinemas, museums, galleries, theme parks and in the build-up to this momentous day, staff then set to work ensuring the park would be ready to open in a COVID-secure manner. Some of these newly implemented measures included social distancing markers across the entire park, regular sanitisation of the rides, mandatory face masks to be worn on rides, and no fast track to be sold at all. Uh, we're not able to run uh, fast track through the course of uh, the season, certainly we're not going to open with it, um, but there won't be that much need for it either. The park then opened on the 4th of July. 
For the first few weeks of operation, several rides were closed for social distancing reasons. Guests didn't mind too much however, as they were just glad to be back and were busy checking out the new changes that had been made over the close season, including the brand new Infinity Bar and Kitchen, as well as several new selfie walls. As the weeks went past and the warmer weather rolled in, the majority of the rides at the park were eventually opened. Fast Track was also rolled out again in small quantities. In September, the park introduced a brand new event in the form of Oktoberfest. This event went down very well with an event hub located right in the middle of the park, featuring a large stage, several picnic benches and food, drink and merch stools. As well as this, many of the audio tracks around the park were given an Oktoberfest twist, just like many of the park's food offerings. Now of course, after the very successful Oktoberfest, the park quickly began setting up for their annual Fright Nights event. This year saw six brand new additions to the event, mainly because the park opted against indoor scare mazes this year due to social distancing measures. Instead though, the park offered more scare zones than ever before. These scare zones being Amity High, Creek Freaks Unchained, Lycanfort Pie, The Fierce of Lorena, and The Swarm Invasion. There was also the terrifying brand new roaming team, the Crows. Another major thing to happen at this year's Fright Nights event was the fact that for the first time ever, all of the mazes at the event were ticketed, costing £10 per run through. These mazes were of course Platform 15, with a reversed layout compared to previous years, and the brand new Roots of Evil, which repurposed the Blair Witch Maze route from previous years. Midway through Fright Nights, a brand new food unit was opened in Stealth's Plaza, this being Ben and Jerry's. This unit takes up half of the building that it's located in, and as of yet, it's still unknown what will occupy the other half of the building in 2021. Fright Nights continued on throughout October, however, with Covid cases rising nationwide, on the 31st of October, it was then announced that the country was going back into lockdown on the 5th of November. This meant that the park's buyout Fright Nights dates and the Fright Nights annual pass day could no longer go ahead and the park was forced to close its doors the following day on November the 1st. A month later in the park's end of year video, we were then reminded of the positive memories that had been made at the park throughout the year. Unfortunately, unlike most years, we received no teasers for new additions to the park in 2021 in this video. And that right there folks brings us to the end of the 2020 season at the Fort Park Resort. It was certainly a very strange year but I have to say I think Fort Park dealt with everything incredibly well and I personally cannot wait to see what's to come to the park this year in 2021. I hope you've all enjoyed taking a look back at the year though and if you would like to see a video about the past year at Alton Towers then be sure to subscribe and give this video a like if we hit 750 likes and I'll be sure to release that video. And yeah, otherwise thank you all very much for watching. My name is Jack Silkstone. Goodbye. How are you gonna get past my whole team? Wait, you're against Jack in the vlog category. <laughs> hey yo Jack, what are you saying my G? Nah, you don't want a war with me. Get slapped up like zero G. I am the vlog K-I-N-G. I am the theme park MVP. Time to shut down PDE. Everybody knows me on an MP3. Yeah. I am the vlog K-I-N-G. I am the theme park MVP.